Check this out. It looks like a diamond, doesn't it? But looks can be deceiving. This is the story of the so-called Killicranky Diamond, a gemstone found on Flinders Island, located in the Bass Strait between Tasmania and Victoria. These gems were among Australia's earliest gemstone exports in the early 1800s, and their high hardness and luster make them durable and visually appealing. And when faceted, they sparkle in a way reminiscent of diamonds. But spoiler alert, they aren't diamonds. The Killicranky Diamond is a form of brilliant white topaz, known for its exceptional clarity, high refractive index and hardness, which give it a sparkling diamond-like appearance. This topaz is often colourless and transparent, qualities that resemble those of true diamonds, leading early settlers and collectors to mistake it for the real thing. The topaz is primarily found on Flinders Island, concentrated at the northeastern end of Killicranky Bay on the island's northwestern coast. It also occurs commonly on nearby Mount Killicranky in offshore sediments and in Mines Creek and Tanners Bay, located approximately 10 kilometres to the south. Alongside this, the topaz also occurs on Cape Barren Island to the south of Flinders Island. Although these findings took on the name of Cape Barren Diamonds, these topaz deposits share the same geological origin as the ones found on Flinders Island, which we will discuss soon. Flinders Island is associated with tin mining activity, though most of the mining actually occurred on nearby Cape Barren Island. Both the tin and topaz found in the region originate from granite formations. The first export of topaz definitely occurred before tin mining began. The tin mineral cassiterite, found in association with the topaz, had not yet been identified at the time. Tin mining began around 1882, but the first discovery of Killicranky diamonds likely occurred as early as 1803 according to studies done on it. In 1851, a remarkable collection of Killicranky gemstones made its way from the remote shores of Flinders Island to the Grand Crystal Palace in Hyde Park, London. This display, part of a grand exhibition showcasing the treasures of the British Empire, included a variety of topaz crystals collected by Joseph Milligan and his team. While these gemstones had become known as Killicranky diamonds due to their sparkling clarity, the exhibit revealed an array of colours beyond the classic clear or white stones. Among the 300 white topaz specimens, viewers marvelled at 40 yellow and 30 pink topaz crystals. Alongside the topaz, Milligan's team had gathered other gems, including 25 pieces of rock crystal and 30 beryls. All part of this fascinating display that showcased the mineral wealth of Australia's Flinders Island and drew admiration from audiences halfway across the world. To clarify, rock crystal is a term used for colourless transparent quartz, also more commonly known as quartz crystals. Beryl is also found on the island, and it is best known as the family of gemstones that include emerald, aquamarine, morganite, and heliodor. Based on the source from Mineral Resources Tasmania, it appears that the beryl found on Flinders Island includes both colourless goshenite and bluish-green aquamarine varieties, though it is typically not gem quality. Now this topaz is associated with a few controversies dating back to at least the 1850s, when an attempt was made to sell it off as diamonds in the UK. According to old articles from that time, attempts were made to sell off Cape Barren Topaz as diamonds. The seller fully believed that they were diamonds, and even the London lapidary, whom he sent specimens to be tested, believed that they were quote diamonds, but of no value. A second person was given the Topaz specimens to test. He immediately said that they were not diamonds and were soft, but upon attempting to file it down, he was surprised by how hard the specimens were. He couldn't make up his mind on what these rocks were. The defendant was later acquitted, due to the fact that no one could agree on what these gemstones actually were, and it was decided that he wasn't attempting to scam people, but that he really believed that the Topaz gems were in fact diamonds. Another controversy occurred in 1919, this time with Killicranky diamonds. Unlike the 1850s, at this point in time, testing for gemstones had advanced to the extent that scientists could distinguish between crystal systems and identify minerals based on their crystal habit and symmetry. By analysing characteristics like cleavage, hardness and crystal shape, gemologists were able to determine that the Killicranky topaz exhibited an orthorhombic crystal system rather than an isometric or cubic crystal system typical of diamonds, which commonly display dodecahedral or octahedral habits. These visual and structural differences, along with the evolving field of X-ray crystallography, allowed experts to more accurately classify and authenticate gemstones, reducing the risk of misidentification. Alongside this, it was noted that none of the specimens scratched a diamond, a telltale sign of Topaz's lower hardness. 
While diamonds rank at 10 on the Moz scale, making them the hardest natural material, Topaz has a hardness of 8, which, although durable, is not sufficient to scratch a diamond. This hardness test provided a straightforward and effective method for confirming that the so-called Killer Cranky diamonds were in fact Topaz, despite their similar appearance and sparkle. But this isn't all. By 1919 the geology of diamond fields had been more thoroughly established thanks to the African diamond rush in South Africa. Geologists knew that ultramafic rocks, specifically kimberlite, hosted diamonds, and that not a single trace of this rock existed in or around Flinders Island, which is composed of sediments and granites. So where did these beautiful topaz gemstones come from? Well, from the ancient magma that now exists as solidified granite on the island. Flinders Island hosts a variety of granite formations ranging from the Devonian to Carboniferous periods, spanning from 419 to 299 million years ago. It contains both S-type and I-type granites, with each contributing differently to the island's mineralogy and gem potential. To clarify the difference between I-type and S-type granites, I-type means igneous type granites, while S-type means sedimentary type granites. S-type granites, such as the Killicranke, Cape Franklin, Babel Island, Strezlecki and Lady Baron granites, contain aluminium rich minerals due to their origin from the melting of sedimentary rocks like clay and shale. These granites are rich in minerals like muscovite, garnet and biotite, and the high aluminium content fosters the formation of gemstone quality minerals such as the topaz. In contrast, I-type granites including the Palana, Lagrada, and Darling Range granites originate from the melting of igneous rocks with lower aluminium and higher calcium and sodium content. I-type granites are characterised by a different mix of minerals, often containing higher amounts of mafic minerals such as hornblende. Although both I-type and S-type granites can include biotite, the S-types are typically richer in aluminium. This higher aluminium content in S-type granites make them more conducive to forming aluminium-rich gemstones, like topaz. The difference between these two types is significant for the gem landscape of Flinders Island. While I-type granites add mineral diversity with common minerals like quartz and feldspar, the S-type granites provide the prized gem deposits that have made Flinders Island an attractive destination for gem collectors. The I-type and S-type granites on Flinders Island form through distinct geological processes, each resulting in unique mineral compositions and characteristics. I-type granites originated from the partial melting of mafic igneous rocks, likely in a subduction-related tectonic environment during the Devonian. This process involved the melting of basaltic or andesitic rocks, producing a magma rich in calcium, sodium and iron but lower in aluminium. As a result, I-type granites are typically a denser, darker appearance with fewer aluminium-rich minerals. I-type granites typically cool and crystallise at a moderate rate within the crust, which can limit the growth of large crystals compared to the slow-cooling pegmatitic pockets often found in S-type granites. While they can form pegmatites, I-type granite tends to contain standard rock-forming minerals such as feldspar, quartz and biotite, rather than the rare or gem-quality minerals commonly associated with S-type granites. In contrast, S-type granites on Flinders Island form from the partial melting of aluminium-rich sedimentary rocks, such as shales and claystones, in a deep crustal setting. This type of granite is derived from sedimentary sources, resulting in an aluminium-rich, silica-saturated magma that crystallised into granites containing minerals like muscovite, biotite, garnet and occasionally tourmaline or cordierite. The presence of volatiles, such as water and fluorine, in the late stages of granite crystallisation allows for the formation of pegmatitic pockets. Pegmatitic pockets within granite are small, mineral-rich zones found in coarse-grained igneous rocks, particularly granites. These pockets form during the final stages of magma crystallisation, when the magma chambers finally reach the point of near-complete solidification from magma to rock. Volatile elements like water and fluorine become concentrated, lowering the magma's viscosity and allowing large, well-formed crystals to grow. This slow-cooling, mineral-rich environment within the pockets provides ideal conditions for forming rare and high-quality minerals such as topaz. The main topaz deposit is found in cavities within granitic pegmatite veins. These pegmatite veins, which can reach widths of over a metre, contain well-formed, free-growing crystals of topaz along with quartz, shawl, beryl and feldspar, with some crystals measuring over a metre in size. Individual topaz crystals are often collected from eroded pegmatite pockets around the bay, where they occur alongside smoky quartz, large mica books and feldspar crystals. 
However, retrieving intact matrix specimens is challenging because topaz, which crystallizes late in the sequence, detaches from cavity walls due to the decomposition of surrounding feldspar and its own cleavage properties. In the case of topaz on Flinders Island, these pegmatitic pockets within the Devonian Killercranky granite intrusion, shown here, provided the necessary aluminium and fluorine rich conditions for topaz to crystallize. Over time, erosion exposed these pegmatitic pockets, releasing gem quality topaz crystals into alluvial deposits where they could be collected. Most of the topaz recovered today is from recent alluvial and residual deposits, including some offshore areas. Richer alluvial deposits containing both cassiterite and abundant topaz are also located south of Tanner's Bay. To the north of Killercranky, blue beryl or aquamarine has been reported in some abundance. So this is the truth about diamonds on Flinders Island. They aren't really diamonds, but they definitely look like it. Even though they aren't real diamonds, they are a beautiful and fascinating variety of colourless topaz. With their brilliant clarity and diamond-like sparkle, these gems have captivated collectors and fossickers for centuries, adding a touch of mystery and allure to the island's rugged landscape. Today, fossickers are still allowed in the area to hunt for their own beautiful topaz specimens, and I'd definitely suggest giving it a go if you ever find yourself able to journey to this fascinating island. I hope you found this topic to be as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.